today, I decided to ask people on Twitter what was the first message queue system that came to their mind. And to my surprise, one of the responses was Postgres. I opened the link and got surprised not only by the possibility of using Postgres as a message broker, but also by the possibility of using Postgres as a cache to replace Redis. And the reason why I got so surprised is because during my journey to learn Redis, one of the things that I have often heard many people say from Redis is that Redis is a database and therefore it should be your primary database. And that actually might make sense. Redis is a real database that just happens to work really well as a cache. And the reason why it works so well as a cache is because it's fast, extremely fast, to the point that it can perform millions of operations in a single second. And well, reading that Postgres, my favorite relational database, could now replace Redis, my favorite no relational database, kind of turned my world upside down. After all, should I replace Redis with Postgres or Postgres with Redis? But before I even considered this question, I wanted to understand, is Postgres as a cache a really good idea? Can it indeed replace Redis? That's what I want to find out today. The article that had been shared with me and that I found out later on that was trending on Twitter was written by Stefan Schmidt. Stefan doesn't only advocate for replacing Redis with Postgres, he actually advocates for replacing everything with Postgres. According to him, by doing so, we'll be able to remove complexity and move faster. However, he couldn't be the only one advocating for replacing Redis with Postgres. And in fact, a couple of people have done the same thing. But first of all, why would I want to replace Redis with Postgres? Stefan already gave two reasons, less complexity and faster chains. But is there more to it? Using Postgres as a cache is not the most common choice, but there are certain scenarios where it might make sense. Let's take a look at a few of them. Unified Technology Stack. Postgres is one of the most popular databases out there. It's free, it's open source, and chances are you're already using it in your application today. Using it as a cache can simplify your technology stack by reducing the need to manage and maintain multiple database systems. Familiar Interface. Postgres supports complex queries and indexing. This makes it easier to handle advanced data retrieval and transformation tasks directly within the cache layer. Using SQL for caching logic can be advantageous if your team is already proficient in SQL, and this is very likely to be the case. In cost, in some cases it might be more cost-effective to use existing Postgres resources for caching rather than deploying a separate caching solution like Redis. Using Postgres for both primary storage and caching can lead to better resource utilization, especially in environments with limited infrastructure budgets. Now that we understood why we would like to replace Redis with Postgres, what should I expect from a caching service? Traditional caching services such as Redis come with a set of features that enhance the performance and scalability of our applications. In order to understand if Postgres can really replace Redis, we need to understand what features are those. So here are some key aspects we should expect from a caching service. The primary goal of caching services is to enhance the performance of applications by making data access faster. High-performance caching solutions can handle high-throughput workloads and provide sub-millisecond response times, significantly speeding up processes that retrieve data. Expiration. By setting expiration times for cached data, we can ensure that outdated data is automatically removed from the cache after a specified period. Making sure that outdated data is not served to our applications is another essential aspect of a caching service. Eviction. Cache services usually persist their data in memory, which historically has been more limited. Because of that, setting an eviction policy allows us to automatically remove less frequently used data to make space for new entries. Key Value Storage At the core of most caching services, data is stored as pairs of keys and values. The simple yet powerful model allows for quick data retrieval, making it easy to store and access frequently used data efficiently. In a nutshell, what you want from a caching service is that it allows you to access your data faster and that it gives you back data that is as up-to-date as possible. So, how can I turn Postgres into a cache? 
According to Martin Hines, as he wrote in his blog, you can get almost everything I mentioned in the previous section from Postgres 2. Both Stefan and Martin say that we can turn Postgres into a caching service by using unlocked tables. Almost all the examples I'll be showing from now on are taken from Martin's publication, Unlocked Tables and Write Ahead Log. Unlocked tables in Postgres are a way of preventing specific tables from generating write ahead log. Whoa. Whoa, in turn, ensures that all changes made to the database are recorded before they're actually written to the database files. This helps in maintaining data integrity, especially in the event of a crash or power failure. A fun fact is that Redis offers a similar mechanism called append-only file, AOF, which not only provides a mechanism to persist data in Redis, but also functions in a similar fashion by logging all operations executed in Redis. For using Redis as your primary database, we turn on AOF, while for using Postgres as a cache, we turn off on specific tables, wall. Turning wall off means improving the performance. For every data modification, Postgres must write the change to both the wall and the data file. This doubles the number of write operations required. Besides that, in order to ensure that every committed transaction is physically written to the disk, wall is designed to force a disk flush, and frequent disk flush operations impact the performance as they introduce latency waiting for the disk to acknowledge that the data is safely written. But it also means giving up on persistence. And this is the main thing to know about analog tables, is that they're not persistent. This is because Postgres uses the wall to replay and apply any changes that were made since the last checkpoint. If we don't have this login, the database cannot be restored to a consistent state by replaying the wall records. Anyway, this could be expected from a cache. Expiration. Both Martin and Stefan say that expiration can be achieved with the use of stored procedures. And well, this is where complexity begins. Stored procedures might be complicated. And in fact, Stefan even takes a step further and suggests that we use ChatGPT to get them written for us inferring that they might indeed be complicated. Truth is that most modern applications don't rely on stored procedures anymore, and many software developers advocate against them nowadays. Generally, the reason for that is because we want to avoid business logic leaking into our databases. Besides that, as the number of stored procedures grows, managing and understanding them can become cumbersome. In addition, we we'll also need to call these stored procedures on a schedule, and to do that, we need to use an extension called pgcron, and we we'll still have to create our schedulers. Eviction. Stefan doesn't even mention eviction in his article, while Martin says that it could be considered optional since expiration would keep the size down. If we still want to enable eviction, though, he suggests adding a column named last read timestamp to our table and running another stored procedure every once in a while to achieve a last recently used eviction policy. On the other side, Redis offers eight types of eviction policy out of the box. So what about the performance? Performance is what matters the most in this case, isn't it? After all, the reason why we generally want a caching service is because we want to access our data faster. Rex Sabino Mulani did a great job on his article comparing the performance of unlogged and logged tables in Postgres. His data shows that the performance of writing, and that we will emphasize it, writing into an unlogged table is twice as fast as doing the same operation in a logged table. But what about reading performance? And here's the catch. Postgres performance optimization strategy relies on shared buffers. Shared buffers store frequently accessed data and indexes directly in memory, making them quickly accessible and reducing the need to read from disk. This improves query performance and data access for both locked and unlocked tables. It's true that unlocked tables might live in these buffers, but they can and will be written to disk if they grow too large or memory is limited. Therefore, unlocked tables primarily enhance write speed, not read speed. And to prove it, I performed a quick experiment using pgbench. You can see how I did it in the link in the description. And the results show that the performance of both logged and unlogged tables are, in fact, quite similar. This outcome reinforces the understanding that unlogged tables primarily enhance write performance. 
For read operations, the performance benefits of unlogged tables are not evident, as both logged and unlogged tables benefit similarly from Postgres caching and optimization strategies. So how does the performance compare to Redis? In addition to benchmarking Postgres, I also ran an experiment with Redis. You can also see the details of this experiment in the link in the description. The performance comparison shows that Redis significantly outperforms Postgres in both writing and reading operations. Redis achieves a latency of 0.09 to 5 milliseconds, which is approximately 85% faster than the 0.650 milliseconds latency observed for Postgres unlogged tables. It also handles a much higher request rate with around 892,000 requests per second compared to Postgres 15,000 transactions per second. But what if I run Postgres in memory? During the review of this study, a colleague from Tibia, Maxim Fedorov, said, what if now unlogged tables were created in a table space that corresponds to memory mapped file? My guess would see completely different numbers. To test this, I ran benchmarks with Postgres data persisting in RAM2, and surprisingly, there was no improvement in the results. After further research, I understood that even though data is stored in memory, accessing it within Postgres shared buffers still incurs additional costs. These costs arise from managing logs and other internal processes necessary for data integrity and concurrent access. Postgres always checks if the data is in shared buffers first. If not, it copies the data from the memory into the shared buffers before serving it, even when the database is persisted in memory. And now, the final question is, should I replace Redis with Postgres? Based on this study, if you need a caching service to improve write performance, Postgres can indeed be optimized using unlogged tables. However, while unlogged tables offer better write performance than logged tables, they still fall short compared to Redis. Besides that, the primary reason for using a caching service is to improve data retrieval time. Unlogged tables do not enhance read performance, while Redis excels with extremely fast read operations. Additionally, Redis helps prevent a large volume of low-cost queries from hitting your database, a benefit unlogged tables cannot provide. Redis also offers built-in features like expiration, eviction policies, and more, which are complex to implement in Postgres. Although managing Postgres may seem easier for some, turning Postgres into a cache doesn't provide the advantages of a dedicated cache service. At the same time, Redis is easy and enjoyable to learn deploy, and use. For faster performance and simplicity, choosing a real caching service like Redis is the clear choice. I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. I certainly had a lot of fun making it. A special thank you for Maxim Fedorov, João Paulo Gomes, and Hernani Fernandes for helping reviewing this study. Stay curious and thank you for watching.